Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of It's Marvel Talk, bitches. I'm your host and sometimes referee, Zach Pearson, and today I'm joined by Michael Dat Hill. Comboing up. I think he said combo, combo life. Hashtag combo life. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that's not already a hashtag. And of course, our new slash occasional supporting character returning featurette, Xeno120. What'd it do? What's the word? How you feeling? Good, good. It's uh, annual Marvel talk, so we haven't done this in a while, or at least uh, I think we haven't done it in a while. I like to do this semi-annually along the lines of about a 30-day time span or anytime something really, really serious has happened within the Marvel world or Marveldom. And there are some things that we can get into and some I didn't tell you guys specifically because I wanted to keep it a surprise because I'm curious what y'all reactions are going to be. But first, we're going to go into the basics like we always do. The stuff that people are always bitching and pissing and moaning and whining about, as well as critiquing stuff. All right. So first off, how do you feel about the state of Marvel Comics now that Captain America is being a bad guy? And it's become a really, really divisive slash hot topic. Where do you stand with evil Steve Rogers or Steve Rogers, if you will? Hashtag Steve. <laughs> and we're going to start with you, Zeno. Um, are you OK? So are we talking about like the main universe? Because yes, they are. the main oh. Steve, Ro Steven Rogers has been warped into being a bad guy that works for Hydra. Um, I think it's kind of funny. It's kind of ironic. He's like, you know, a bad guy. You know, he's supposed to work for um, the heroes against evil. And yet he joined the side of the evil side. You know what I'm saying? Um, Bro, H H Hydra, this, this isn't Star Wars. Villain and villain organizations well, I, have names. More. Um, I think it's fine. I, I, I like when uh, they make the um, the good guys turn bad, you know? Like Anakin? Yeah. I think it's fine. Okay. You are in favor slash support Steve Rogers' stories. All right, what about you, uh, Mr. Hill? Also, uh, for the record, you might be better off setting us to voice activity. And I'll just try to nerf or denoise the sound of you pressing buttons later because you might find yourself in a situation where you need to do a combo, but your hands are going multiple places. Oh, yeah. For those of you who couldn't tell, uh, we have uh, Mr. Heel simultaneously getting the footage that you see before you. Yes, these combos and ass whoopings are brought to you by Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Ultimate heel edition all right me i think it's pretty fucked up like this man was supposed to be portrayed as a hero for the world during world war ii and then even in the future after coming through the ice still willing to put his downline for the american people not only them but just for the world in general then you're just gonna join the evil organization at the time you thought killed your best friend ended up sending being the reason you were frozen and separating you from your love interest is pretty fucked up fair enough you are against well i guess that leaves me as a tiebreaker and oh ironically i'm actually going to break this tie yeah i'm all for the evil shit but it's not because, ooh, I think Steve, evil Steve Rogers is so much cooler than the goody-goody two-shoes. No. I say it's better because here's the thing you have to remember about franchise characters. Characters that have stories that are going to outlive everyone you will ever know. They have to be dynamic and they have to be able to diversify. Here's the thing about Superman. No matter how people feel about Superman, he wasn't always, or he's never truly been the actual Boy Scout. 
They just say he's the Boy Scout, indirectly implied it, and it became his image with popular consciousness, as well as the fans. If you read a book right now that started off with the title, Superman Kills Everyone in the Justice League, you're going to be pissed. Even if you don't know any other DC heroes because it's Superman. Superman can't do that because he's Superman. Well, fuck you. Superman can do that. Oh, he can't do that shit to Batman. But the point is, is that when you have characters and you only write one type of story, you will legitimately lose interest. And these companies know this. So they always try to play with it or they might have a writer come in, let them do something dynamic. And if not so much people bitch about it, but if the book doesn't sell and people bitch about it, they're going to pull it. I forgot what famous comic book writer said it, but... Basically, the way he said it was, and he used Spider-Man as an example, the thing about dynamically changing an established hero is that you really can't do it. You just have to temporarily do it long enough to where people aren't going to stop reading the book. Spider-Man has gone through a bunch of outfits, but you know why he goes always goes back to the classic Spider-Man up until, well, recently, in recent years? Because people will complain about it even though it's just a costume, even though he's worn over 20 costumes. In fact, Spider-Man has almost worn the most costumes out of the entire superhero, American superhero genre. It's basically him and Batman. He got a symbiote outfit, or he got a super suit that actually gave him super abilities on top of his super strength and superhuman abilities. So he was a double super, super suit, super person. And did he keep the symbiote? No. So the way I look at it, Captain America, it was it was more along the lines of it's about time, and it was and the time was and the time was right, because Captain America's stories are pretty simple. When there's not some big event that he needs to lead a group into fighting, his personal stories are. Oh, a personal battle with a villain that's trying to fuck with him. Oldest cliche in the book. Nothing wrong with that. If it sells, it sells. Look at Batman and a the Joker. They're going to be fighting 100 years from now. Or it's been the government or some part of the government is, is doing something that he doesn't think is right. So he's going to go against the government that he loves or holds so dearly. That basically came about in the Civil War era. Now, long story short, if y'all didn't already know, it's kind of like the movies pretty much. But, you know, uh, Wanda wasn't really involved uh iron man wanted to get every single superhero and their abilities registered and have mandatory training so that would up but i would also include people with secret identities okay captain america said are you fucking insane mainly because here's the thing nowhere in tony's plan was there anything that would protect innocent bystanders or relatives to these superheroes. He basically just wanted a world superhero police force, but he didn't think about the ramifications. They be they're basically celebrities. They will be found. And if they cause collateral damage or if they're involved in collateral damage, who's to say like a corporation won't try to stick them for the stick them for the bill. Contrary to most uh uh well, as we all know, unlike Tony and Batman most superheroes' income is middle class. Just straight up middle class. Or they live in a situation where they're self-fulfilling or self-sustaining. Like sci-fi space people. You know? So, I like it not just because... People actually die, and Captain America is responsible for killing them. No, I'm not one of those sick people that just need someone to die to think that a comic is good. I like it because this story opens doors for Captain America and future Captain America writers, and it could inspire someone to write an even greater story, or inspire someone to write equally as good stories. That's how good stories are, whether it's comic book, graphic novel, uh, manga, or a traditional novel. Your book, if it's good enough, might inspire someone to also make something. Just imagine what they might be writing for Captain America in 10 years. In fact, I'm going to remember this podcast, and I'm specifically 
going to bring up this up if I, oh, hollering if I know you and am alive in 10 years. Hell, I'm pretty sure if I'm alive, me and you're going to be fucking around in 10 years. And I know we might not remember this whole conversation, but I'm going to just play this section just so we can compare and contrast Captain America 10 years down the line. Because if they're willing to go this far and make him a bad guy, that and one of the best types of bad guys, in my opinion, the bad guy who doesn't think he's doing the wrong thing, then who's to say what might be happening 10 years down the line? Shit could get realer than we ever know. So, yeah. I'm with you on this one, uh, Zeno. Um, all right, moving on. What characters do you think deserve their own book or rather more spotlight and sunshine from Marvel? I'm going to go first, which is rare, but I'm going to just straight up say it. One of the characters I think don't get enough love or don't get enough attention, most likely just because, you know, they're kind of sort of in a group. No, is a uh, fucking um, Johnny Storm. Now, I'm a Johnny Storm fan, but not for the traditional reasons. I don't want to be like Johnny Storm. He's an arrogant asshole prick fuck boy. I'm not even sure where he gets half the money he does from because last I checked, this motherfucker is like that has no legit job. And I like him in the sense that I feel like there's room for character development. Well, more specifically, him and Iceman, if you think about it, because their personalities are damn near identical, except one's whimsically, magically gay now for no fucking reason. Um, but Johnny Storm has been a character who's gotten away with being an egotistical, arrogant prick and basically uh, a 90s cliche stereotype pretty much since he was born, since the character was made. What happens when a villain or better yet other superheroes come in and say, look, it's time for you to fucking grow up or there's going to be some goddamn consequences. Tired of your bullshit. When is the thing going to haul off and finally say, hey, Johnny, you know what? Fuck you. And just straight up whoop his ass or become one of his enemies. Dr. Doom is a fucking good guy right now. How trippy is that? Very. And not like a, oh, uh, I'm aligning myself with the side of good because it suits me. No, I mean, he's a legitimate good guy. He regrets things he's done. And he's trying to not so much make amends, but trying to show the world, hey, I'm a better person. It's really creepy. But of course, he's still doomed. So from time to time, even if he doesn't fuck it up, people don't want to listen or believe him. So, you know, fights. Uh, I think it's called the infamous doom right now. He stole one of Iron Man suits, modified it with, you know, techno magic shit because he's doomed. That's his favorite thing to combine. It's like peanut butter and jelly for this man with some cocaine sprinkles. And um, fucking... Just real talk. It's, it's interesting because, again, here's a character that's worked one way for so, so long. And they say, you know what? It's time to explore. Human beings do that, too. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something right now. My life the way it is now. If it was identical, identical 10 years from now, same food. Same breakfast in the morning, same income, same location, same computer, same everything. I would probably lose my fucking mind. You think a writer wouldn't? <clears throat> but yeah, um, uh, it, Johnny Storm and Iceman combo or really just Johnny Storm. Because there's been, even when there, there's never really character development with Johnny Storm. It's just him reacting to a situation. And I don't like that. I want to see him not so much snap. I want to see him in a state he's never been in before. And I don't want it to be some flavor of the month thing. I want it to be something that people are going to remember. Okay. Now, um... All right, Zeno, you go. Who you want to see get more love? <laughs> oh... Personally, okay. I, you can have more than one if you want. Oh, okay, cool. Cause I got I got two. One's funny and the other one's just kind of random. Um, I kind of want to see Miles Morales get like a live action movie. Um, you know that actually might be a possibility, but I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. 
um, I know I heard he's getting um an animated one, but like no, 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 no. no. I said live action, legitimate one. Like hey. I, we'll talk about it later. It's a possibility. Okay. Um. Besides him, uh, I think it'd be funny to give attention. Who? Squirrel. Squirrel girl. <sighs> Strictly for strictly for shits and giggles. Well, look, it's you're not wrong, but if it makes you feel any better, that's exactly what's already happening. There, they started filming last year a Squirrel Girl comedy show. I can't remember though if it's gonna be um if it's gonna be on a sitcom on a major network or if it's gonna be on Netflix. But you can Google it. Yes, she's getting shit. Dude, just honestly, straight. I just think she's a funny character. That's all. No, 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 no. She is. I just wish they would make her mi- make their mind up about her fucking costume, cause like she doesn't even make sense to me at times. Even with the art style change, I can usually follow shit, but her 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 shit just makes no sense to me because there's no reason giving why her outfit changes so much, and also there's nothing stating that her outfit did change. It's like, at least with Iron Man, you know when he changed his suit. With the X Men, you know when they changed the suit. Squirrel Girl, I don't know what the fuck is going on. She just living her life, man. No, uh, oh, yeah. They need to be more consistent. I give you that. And apparently she kicked Thanos' ass, but I'm not even gonna touch on that. Um, okay, who's the other character? That was Miles and uh, Squirrel Girl. Okay, Mr. Morales and the Squirrel Nina. All right. What right about you, Rami? Give me more circling, beautiful Joe comics. Anyways. Yo, yo, I love Beautiful Joe. I'm sorry. This game is hilarious mm-hmm. for the sheer fact that he gets all his powers from movies and they still treat the fighting like it's still in the movie. Granted, he, it is a bit slow watching him move around, but it's still hilarious. It's just really- I've, I've literally been going around saying Hen Shinagogo like recently for no reason. <laughs> Shinagogo, baby. One of the more fucked up openings to a video game, but no one caught it. But of course, you know, I did. Y'all know uh, when him and Sylvia are in the movie theater making out and shit before, you know, she gets kidnapped and crap like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're not they're not making out. OK, what it, are went they over, doing? it went over y'all head. All right. No, no, I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay, well, he didn't. Okay, well, here's the thing. If you have your audio set up straight, or if you listen to it in a high-profile audio system, and listen to what Sir Sylvia says, uh, he was getting sucked off, and she was waiting to get her pussy eaten out. She said, Joe, I want a little bit of lip service, and then you hear him zipping up his pants. <laughs> Think I'm bullshitting? Go watch it. Go fucking watch it. Hell, we all got computers. You can emulate Beautiful Joe 1 on your fucking uh, computer right now. I wasn't about to buy four copies of Beautiful Joe 1 and Beautiful Joe 2. So I played the GameCube versions, but I knew Dante was in Beautiful Joe 1 or 2 or both. I didn't remember. So I got the emulator on my computer. But uh, yeah, yeah, I plugged it into my sound system. And I was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, wait, 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 she said lip service. That ain't got nothing to do with making out. And I was like, just to make sure, let me just put lip service in Google. And I'm pretty sure y'all know what came up. Sucking dick. <laughs> yeah. It's just the way he said it. It's like, he, he, didn't, he didn't say it comical. He just said it like, you know, it was, it was like, oh, I just saw a bird fly by. Sucking dick. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, well, who do you want to see? I think Beautiful Joe was his answer. No, it's not. You, I'm talking about a serious answer. I mean, motherfucker, you're playing Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Ultimate right now. There has to be someone you know you don't see enough of or want to see more of. God damn it. Motherfucker, who's on your roster right now besides Spider Man? Give me a minute. I got to go back. You don't know who you're fighting with. Holy shit. Well, I'm doing training with us Wesker right now, so I'd have to... Well, 
mission mode as Wesker, so I'd have to go back. But if you want to know, his number ten is a bitch. Also, how do you fuck up the simplest shit as mission mode? Like they've had so many chances to get mission mode right. Oh my god! First off, first off, motherfucker, there's supposed to be a dedicated button that lets you watch the computer mm -hmm. do it. I've never been in a uh, combo mission mode where you couldn't watch the computer do it. Like, I'm not even joking. I can't name one fighting game that I've played where you didn't have a button that lets you watch the computer do the combo you're supposed to try to get right. It doesn't matter if I press the buttons. If I'm pressing them too fast or too slow, I don't know. I've got nothing to fucking compare it to. You have to go to YouTube damn near to fucking do that shit. You know a good one that I just looked at? Um, Ghost Rider, because the only time I've ever heard of him was when Nicolas Cage put him in the theaters, and that was about it. I never, I hardly saw any form of media or a remake of the shit he did Well, for, anything for Ghost Rider. That is true. Well, let me tell you this right now. One, there's three Ghost Riders right now, which is a bit crazy. So Ghost Rider has gone from being a individual to a mantle. Um, two, most Ghost Rider media is a cameo. So that's why. You can catch him in Incredible Hulk. You can catch him in the Fantastic Four show. And that's it. And those are from the 90s. And to his credit, that motherfucker beat Galactus. He beat I, Galactus. I actually remember that. Oh, man. It was so fucking beautiful. Oh, no. The, the Raging Demon, it was there. But the game said no. Dude, don't rely on the Raging Demon if you have Akuma. Just, if it's going to kill, do it without the Raging Demon. But fucking... That killed. Switching out. Yeah. But fucking, like, it was so... Because, like, Mr. Fantastic was the only person that understood the severity of the situation. I'm not going to emulate the whole thing, but I'm going to paraphrase my way because it's funny when I paraphrase because I'm a comic and people love it when I do that. He goes up to him and he's like, Galactus, you say that you've eaten planets that billions of people lived on. Well, let me show you what billions and billions of people feel. And then Galactus is just like, motherfucker, do you not see who the fuck I am? I'm the juggernaut. Bi oh, 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 shit. Is that nigga constipated? Shut the fuck up, Johnny. <laughs> this, I just saved your big dad. This, this flaming haired nigga just straight up knocked Galactus to his knees without hitting him. This man just fucked up a cosmic entity. Without hitting him. He looked at him to death. Is this motherfucker having a heart attack? And he's just trying. And then the whole thing just turns into him trying to explain to people like. I don't think y'all seem to understand what the fuck is going on. It basically turned into Bill not a science guy. Hey, you don't know what the fuck is happening right now. Let me science that ass there real quick. Is. Let me science that ass real quick. He just took someone here. who's invulnerable to pretty much everything ever. Save for maybe death. And gave him a heart attack. He... Oh. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's kind of sort of how it went. I'll find a link to it later just so y'all can watch that shit and react to it. Cause I remember that talk. episode thoroughly. Real Nigga talk. rolls up in his whip like, and says. <laughs> you say you've conquered, you've eaten, you've destroyed billions upon billions of planets and billions upon billions of lives. Well, let me show you what those billions upon billions felt. Motherfucker, don't you know who I am? I'm Rick James. Oh, oh my God. It was, oh. dude, like I, 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 I legit, I wasn't even in shock when I saw this as a little kid. I was just like, who the fuck is this nigga right here? Is it a nigga? His head's on fire. I don't know. Like that was my introduction to Ghost Rider. So real talk, I already knew, oh, this guy can probably fuck up all the X-Men, but hey, I still like him more.
That's a fight I'm not trying to see. Fucking Shuma Garage got the Mystic Stand. No, he don't. Ghost Rider do. On oh, another one for me, uh, well, supposedly she's going to be in Marvel's Capcom 4 one way or another. Songbird. Long story short, there's a special type of team that Marvel has where I guess is where they experiment with the idea of some of their villains who they can't really do shit with anymore or don't want to write dumb stories for where they only want to do one thing because they only have one gripe with one particular hero called the Exile. Not the Exiles, the Thunderbolts. They're criminals, supervillains. They're... They're the Suicide Squad, except you know they're not they're not they're not a Black Ops team, and they're not gonna die if they fall out of line. And Songbird has been a character who's become a leader and a pronounced figure within uh, that group, and her name's been tossed around a lot with the Marvel vs. Capcom Four rosters and leaks and shit. And of course, as you know, I did get a confirmation on which one is real, but here's the thing. That doesn't include the DLC roster. I don't know which DLC roster list is real. Not to mention, we don't even know for sure how deep the DLC roster is going. We know we're getting six um, in this year and next year. But we don't know what happens after that. So, who's to say? Or she could just appear in story mode and be a boss. Because people didn't uh, catch it, but Capcom's been saying for the longest time, there are actually story mode bosses. People that are only in story mode that you fight. Which I think is cool. That automatically gives more depth to the game. And what if they have a Bosch Rush? Oh my god, I want to play a Bosch Rush. Um, anyways, but yeah. Songbird is a, a woman, in case you can already tell. And she has sonic vibration type abilities and energy light type shit. And she gets hot pink neon-ish colored wings, but you don't expect someone like that to be a villain. Or at least to, you know, be one of the bad guys. So that's why I kind of sort of have an interest with it because her character can go either way and it would fit her personality either way. Character growth is something I like to see when I'm reading anything. Okay, now, moving on. All right, let me uh, go ahead and uh, I'll remember to mark this 27 minutes in. All right, so... Miles Morales potential live action movie. First and foremost, if you have not seen Spider Man Homecoming, tell me right now. I haven't. Okay. Well, we're going to avoid spoilers, but we're going to ex explain one of the bullshits because I'm sure you remember us talking about this at least two or three times in previous podcasts. Good old Mary Jane Watson, or lack thereof. Ah! Ah! <laughs> dude, I, dude, I love saying that. Mary Jane Watson, or lack thereof. All right, so here's the thing. MJ, as you know, there's uh, Miles Morales is not from regular Marvel continuity, but he got put in it because he had an eight-year-old hamburger that he fed to Molecule Man. Yes, that's actually why he's in the Marvel Universe right now. I'm not even fucking joking. Anyways, okay, so in Miles Morales' timeline, uh, he is a biological relative of Mary Jane. Mary Jane is not a Caucasian redhead. Mary Jane is not even named Mary Jane or uh, her nickname is just MJ. I forgot what they called her, uh, but I think the first part was like Maria or something. It's Michelle, I think. Yeah, Michelle something. Like Gonzalez or Rodriguez or something. Yeah, but then she, but she said she preferred MJ, which makes no fucking sense. Okay, so here's the thing. What they were trying to hide during production of the movie wasn't that she was playing Mary Jane because they knew people were going to be up in arms. They were hiding that she was the other Mary Jane from the Ultimate Universe. Okay, here's the thing. Donald Glover has been the voice actor for Miles Morales in every form of animated media he's been in. Okay? Now, but in the movie, and people kind of get a little... This is where they threw people off. They didn't tell you outright who his character was, and he's not Miles Morales. Because first off, Donald's like 32, and Miles in Marvel right now is 15 or 16. I mean, he's 16, 16 and a half. Okay? So, here's the thing. He's playing a future a villain of Spider-Man's that doesn't really get that much attention, called the Prowler. It's basically a, a guy who's got a super tricked out car and shit. Like, pretty boring as far as villains go. But here's the thing. When he said, there's a line that he says when he's trying to help out Spider-Man, 
that started helping people piece the clues together. But then also we found out the full name of that version of MJ. <laughs> Seriously, don't do that into the mic. So basically, Miles Morales, they're implying Miles Morales exists in the Spider-Man Marvel universe. They're implying it because he has biological relatives that are in the movie. So it is possible we might get a Miles Morales movie, but most likely they haven't picked Miles Morales and they're still working out details with Fox because Fox is a little bitch. I'm just going to say it. Fox is a little bitch. They love beating dead horses. I've watched Fox since they existed. 70% of their shows is about a dysfunctional family with different amounts of people. Simpsons, Family Guy, American Dad, King of the Hill, Wonder Years. Who am I forgetting? Oh, yeah, that one show. Oh, yeah. Uh, dysfunctionally something. Um, married with Children. With the Bundys. And I'm forgetting That's like so hilarious. Yeah, and I'm forgetting like two or three more shows, but they love beating a dead horse. That's why all those fucking X Men movies sucked. They didn't want to stop beating the horse. It just felt right to them. Goddamn fuck boys. But yeah, that's where you get your chance, uh, Zeno, of possibly getting Mr. Morales in a Marvel movie or a live action movie, period. But cross your fingers and hope Fox doesn't make it alone. <laughs> Cause then you really. Um, I just want to say, um, his Aaron Davis. Yeah, just if you don't, if you haven't seen the movie, just know that Aaron Davis is who you're looking for. The song. I'm saying. Who's? Yeah, I'm gonna Google that because I don't even know who yeah, Aaron Davis Google is. Yeah, Google it. Google. Yeah. Also, they fucked up Venom. Oh, not Venom. Venom's on the movie. Let me not. I'm, I'm not gonna pretend that's even a spoiler. The, the Flash Thompson, Spider-Man's oldest bully and shit. They fucked him up in the movie. In every sense of the word, his personality and his looks. Ah, and also, yeah. he's not even in the fact that he's not even a fucking jock. He's an Indian kid who's chubby, who comes from a lot of money and is spoiled. How the fuck is that, Flash Thompson? Just because you just because you answer fast doesn't mean you're correct. <laughs> I'm just I'm just like that that, that I'm, I'm just ripping that bandit off now because it's gonna piss you off when you see Flash Thompson. The first thing I don't, dude, I'll shit you not. I heard nine people simultaneously say, "What the fuck?" in the movie theater. It was hilarious when Flash Thompson came on screen, and he's like five foot three or five foot four. Like what the fuck. That is not a Flash Thompson I know at all. Thank you. Oh, and that weird kiss scene that was in the trailer doesn't actually happen in the movie. Thanks. Oh, and uh, this one is just funny. The the chick playing MJ, Zendaya, or however the fuck you say her African ass name. Zendaya. Yeah. She's taller than almost everybody else in the fucking movie. She said she's like eight feet alone. <laughs> she she's like she's like, I believe, almost six foot flat, and everyone else in the fucking movie is about five foot eight. And Tom Holland is like five foot six. I'm not even joking. Facts. And here's the bullshit part. No, you're not. She's a she go on Instagram or Twitter and posted a video of her going inside of his shoes to pull out a, a lifter to make him look taller. And he's like, Oh, you being an asshole. Like the whole point of me having this is because you're so damn tall on screen. And I'm just like, I'm I'm really just not liking this girl. Like, I I don't think she's a bad person, but I'm put it this way. If I see her in a movie, and it's not a Marvel movie. I'm going to go out of my way not to watch it. It's like George Clooney. I saw a video. And this is back when, you know, shit wasn't all on YouTube. I watched George Clooney discuss something he was opening up in Vegas or investing in with one of his friends. And he turned the entire interview into asking his friend, hey, can I fuck your wife? Because she's really hot. Like, he asked this dude like eight times. Can I fuck your wife, please? Please, come on, let me fuck your wife. While they're on camera and shit, and the dude's sitting there with a smile on his face, like, <laughs> like I'm just like, I, I was disgusted with him as a person. But, but, Bernie Mac is in the Oceans movies, so uh, I watch the Oceans movies, and I fucking love the Oceans Eleven movies. Um, yeah, back on topic. All right, so yeah, that's your little explanation. All right, Thank now, 
this one is the one that's uh, I'm pretty sure near and dear to most of our hearts, or at least my generation's heart. Where can they improve with their video game licensing distribution? Let me go ahead and knock that shit out of the park. And I'm going to just sum it up in two fucking words and then explain it. Pay attention. I'm sorry, three words. God damn it. Okay. As we all know, X-Men, or really Marvel, they know how to make it rain on the video game scene. They've been doing it since the 90s. And they've been very, very good at it. Whether it was a Japanese or American company, well, American companies usually suck at it, but when it was a Japanese company making a Marvel game, you already knew you was in for a treat. It was either going to be super difficult, but good, or it was going to be balanced and fucking amazing. Let me say that again. It was going to be fucking amazing. Like the first time you see a pair of Tiggo bitties. So, here's the thing though. We all know that cell phones haven't taken over the market, but cell phone games are more common with popular and established franchises because they already can stand out in a crowd. Marvel has like, simultaneously no less, they have four uh, app type games or uh, virtual console cell phone app type games. I'm gonna put those three all in the same category. I need a name for them, virtual console, app, cell phone. We'll call it the VAC category. They're all in the VAC category. Here's the thing though. They're not paying attention to how any of this shit is really managed or run. They're just collecting money. Dude. There's this one that somehow got ported to the PlayStation 4, which makes absolutely no sense. Called Marvel Superheroes Omega. Or Marvel Omega, something like that. It's on the virtual console, so you can go look it up. It's made by a company called Gazillion. How do, now this is the, and this is me being genuinely honest with my description of uh, Gazillion, and I apologize if some people may think this comes off as uh, intended racism or racially insensitive, but Gazillion is the equivalent of the Made in China knockoff of video game companies. In fact, I think they actually might be based in a major um, bootlegging country, uh, Thailand, or China or something like that, because those are major bootleg. And I'm not again. I'm not being racist. I'm, I'm stating a fact. I remember, I'm also. I also work for an entertainment software uh, seller, and we work closely with distributors because, well, that's where we get our shit from. So we know when there are bootlegs coming in and out. Also, not to mention, uh, some companies will even disguise themselves as the manufacturer. So, so there are companies that only deal bootlegs of shit and don't even know they got deal been dealing bootlegs of the shit. So, Gazillion, if you ever look them up, likes to make you pay for shit in the game. Yes, pay to win. We've heard it a billion times before. But here's what makes them special. They take their money and don't fucking update their shit. They make no games that aren't offline. All their shit is DRM and pay to win. And they're going to be up your ass if you violate their security. But they never want to update nothing. And almost all their games, just for example, let's say the maximum level is 50. Most people will get out at level 10 or 15. And Marvel and Disney ain't looking into none of this shit. At all. Contest of Champions, that's another one. Don't get me wrong, Contest of Champions is apparently a decent one. It's basically a cell phone fighting game. But remember, they had a scandal... I want to say about seven months ago because like half of their super combos from characters were ripoffs of Marvel versus Capcom super combos or Capcom super combos that didn't even go to fucking uh, uh, Marvel characters. Now, when you have a game where you're making dozens of characters a year or dozens of the characters in like a annual time frame, I could understand some shit is just going to start looking similar. How many ways can you animate a right punch? Let's be honest. How many ways? But the problem becomes is when you don't even ask for help. Because you don't want to pay anybody. Extra. Cons of Champions actually has a pretty good following and does decently well. There's also a Diablo style Marvel game that has everybody in it. It's basically 
people it, it looks like ultimate alliance from a distance but it's not ultimate alliance but it reminds people of it and it's doing decent i can't knock it but at the same time they just now after t two years ago got their licensing situation straightened out with disney fox um who am i forgetting disney fox who's the other one that has marvel shit disney fox sony Disney, Fox, and Sony figured out because Disney put their foot down and foot down and said, "No exclusivities for entertainment products. Shared licensing. Shared licensing. Shared licensing." Because everything is divided based on the platform. What you can do and get away with in the movies, major motion film, is not the same as what you can do with an animated film or motion picture or an animated TV show or a video game. They're all separate. That's why Wolverine can show up in Spider-Man TV shows on Disney XD, but Wolverine showing up in fucking Spider-Man the movie or Wolverine and Spider-Man showing up in a Marvel movie, it's like hell freezing over because there's so many different people that you have to go through. And just because some people want more money and don't give a fuck about if a product is good or bad because they don't give a shit about the characters or what they're doing, they get in the way of people like Kevin Feige, who actually genuinely cares. You know? So, I want them to keep doing what they're doing, or at least, you know, make sure, even though Disney does a lot of fucked up shit, they know how to do their licensing. They need to completely change their mold to the Disney style of licensing. We want to know you're making a good product, for the most part. Because Disney rarely has a bad video game. They might not be interesting or in my age group, but real talk, Disney genuinely rarely has a bad video game. I want them to have shared licensing for everybody so that way everybody can live in peace and not fuck with each other. Wolverine was on Wolverine on the X-Men at the same time that he was on that Sp uh, a Spider-Man show. Mind you, it was two different Wolverines. They, the outfits were even different. It didn't matter. It worked. Pay the fuck attention, update how you do your licensing, and continue to make sure that people aren't making games and crap that'll ruin how they perceive anything with your label on it. Because there will come a time, we all know it, there will come a time in a day when Marvel says, we love money, we like video games, how about you? And they start passing out licensing like candy, and it only takes one fuckboy to say, oh yeah, this movie's coming out, get this done in four months, get the fuck out. That's what they try to do with Sega. Look how those uh, Sega Marvel games turned out. Ass. But I do like what they're trying facts. to do. Yeah, basically, facts. What they're trying to do now, because I don't know if y'all have seen it, because it's really not even a fucking trailer. There is a Avengers game being made by Square Enix, because Square Enix has licensing specifically to use Avengers and Avengers characters. The thing, though, is, is that it wasn't really a trailer. It was like 30 seconds of everybody's weapons being destroyed and on the ground. Ooh! Didn't see no character models. Nothing. None of that shit. So, we don't know what that's going to turn into. We don't know if it's going to be an RPG. I will cry if it's an RPG. We don't know if it's going to be an action game because we ain't seen a legit action game, Devil May Cry style, nothing with Marvel characters since you know 2d stopped being the main way we played video games basically since about 97 98 or we could see an avengers only fighting game made by squaresoft uh squaresoft oh, fuck it you know who i mean we don't know what it's gonna be we just know that they have like a three or four year contract to get this game done and you know what that's a good thing as long as Tetsuya no more ain't working on it, because then it's gonna take two millenniums. Fun fact: I wasn't in high school. I wasn't in high school when Kingdom Hearts One come came out. Now we're on game number three. I'm almost thirty. Keep that man away from Marvel. All right. <clears throat> That's enough out of me. What about you, uh, Hill? What can they do to can improve their video the question? What can they do to improve their video game licensing? Hmm. Or are you satisfied with it? 
don't know. Me, they need to figure out what time and when people can use the characters to make certain games. Because you kind because like you, every time they just make a Marvel game, it can guarantee like certain people, like Iron Man, Captain America, and stuff like that. But you'll hardly any see any of the more hidden ones people forget about. That's one thing I think it'd be better. Add more characters people haven't seen. It's like, oh, what do you do? And just instead of saying, oh, there goes another Captain America. So you prefer they have better character management? Better character management. Hmm. I'm more of an RPG person, so I don't. I don't mind it if they would have made it. Like an MMO, but if dude don't make it pay to win, don't say you can get. I'll make it like DC Universe, where all the powers we want, we have to pay for. I keep forgetting that game exists, dude. Like, I have a character that's like level 28 when the cap used to be 30, and I think the cap is only like 40 right now. And I have not touched that game after the first year it came out. And it's not because it sucked, it, it's far from it. It's because fucking the powers and abilities I want, I have to pay for. Mm -hmm. I don't like that because why can't I just get the power set I want? And if I want to change it or get more, make me pay for it. No, no, no. You get these three or four. And if you ain't got these three or four, you're going to pay for everybody else's shit. Or I can go be a Superman clone. I can go be a Batman clone. I can go be a Wonder Woman clone, but if I want to be a Green Lantern clone, five ninety nine. Last hour, they ain't even got all the lanterns in there yet. How are they gonna nope. do White Lantern? Good luck with that one. Anyways, um, all right, all right, Zeno, what about you? What can they do to improve how they handle their video game licensing? Or are you satisfied with how they do it now? Um, more characters that are put on a back burner, uh, make them more like of a main cast. <coughs> Blade. <coughs> no. You said what? Blade. For sure. For sure. That's, oh, that's what I mean. Here's something fucked up. He was done for MVC three. He was completed. But the director said no because he felt like he had too many sword users in the game. That is the dumbest shit I have ever fucking heard. How many people use projectile in that game? Like 90% of the characters. Why didn't you cut some of them? Continue. Um, mm -hmm. that, 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 was, that was pretty much it. Like, because oh. a lot of, everybody knows, like, you see, you know. Spider-Man, Wolverine, but like, there's a lot of people that don't know people who, um, but a lot of other people, you know, Songbird, yeah. Iron Fist, right? And a lot of people didn't even know that Daredevil was the guy in the background of one of the fucking stages, because they got characters that people can they could learn to like or they can recognize. They just don't want to fucking. Oh well, they're not the most popular. Okay, cool. Well, that's how this shit works. You don't just take the most popular. You take the most popular, and then you throw in shit that you know people didn't see coming, like fucking Modok. Nobody asked for Modoc. Nobody thought no of Modoc. No one really asked for Modoc for shit. No, no. And the only person that asked for Modoc didn't even technically ask for Modoc. Uh, the producer who oversaw the game, not the director. Ryu Natsuma was the director. Um, that other guy who handles all their fighting games. Uh, Yoshinori Ono. The guy that likes dressing up like Chun-Li for some odd reason. He went to Marvel and said, hey, show me or can we see some weird characters like who have weird shapes or something. And they showed a Modoc. And he said, oh, this guy looks funny. We'll put him in. That's, that's, I'm not even joking. That's like legit what the fuck happened. I don't hate that Modoc's in the game, but. I, you hate the reasoning behind it? Yes. Yes. It's like having diabetes and loving cheesecake. You know you love cheesecake, but you hate what it'll do to you. <laughs> Death. Basically. Oh, by the way, they could make her a fucking character. Or a boss. Yes, Marvel does have a character who is the personification of Death. She's in love with Deadpool. 
But Thanos wants her too. Yep. And then when she realized she could, uh, and then when uh, she realized that uh, Thanos uh, was basically betraying her lust for him to die and everything else by staying alive as long as he had, um, she started crushing and trying to seduce his son Thane. Also, if there ever was a character who should be DLC, it's Thane. Or Thanos' brother, because people keep forgetting he has one. But Thane, uh, just a, not to get too off topic or to interrupt, but yo, real talk, this is Thane in a nutshell. Thane is a goddamn doctor, so you know, you know Thanos hates him. Thane is a goddamn doctor, but on top of that, on top of that, he has his father's durability, and the Phoenix Force has an interest in him, as well as death. Can you imagine not even playing this dude, just just seeing him in the game? Like, what the fuck would you do to someone like here's Thanos DNA and Phoenix? Oh, yeah. And Death has a crush on him. What the fuck do you do to that guy? Be, first off, you pray you be thankful he's a good guy because uh, if there was a motherfucker, I don't want to fuck with. But yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, go ahead, continue. Or was that pretty much it for you? Oh, that was pretty much it. I just want to see more, like more new characters, like new new characters. Gotcha, gotcha. Gwenpool. All right. Um. Now, now this is hypothetical. You can make it as long of an answer or as short as an answer. For example, I'm gonna go first. What should they turn into a TV show next? Thunderbolts. Fucking Thunderbolts. Because it's Suicide Squad as a TV show. That's not shitty. That's it? Who want to go next? Hmm. Well, they already have a Black Lightning coming out. Um, Black Bolt? Lightning. Nigga, nigga. We're talking about Marvel. I uh, I know I'm just saying because I don't really want to I don't have anything right now I was just thinking about it okay. it was like a side note kind of well here's a good cheat answer for you just say the characters that you wanted to see get more attention in a book series they already have an ultimate spider man oh and squirrel girl they have one coming out for that too so they don't have an ultimate spider-man tv show cartoon they don't have an ultimate spider-man tv show that's not miles morales that's still parker i mean uh well true but that's that's ultimate spider-man that's what i meant all right hill what about you I'd give a interesting question. Let me look through this character roster to give you a better answer. Uh, so most of the people I have seen be good, but Marvel. Have She Hulk have her own thing besides nope. being in like. She's always oh, been a side here. character. It'd be an interesting dynamic seeing as how she's also a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Legal shows actually do do halfway decent too. So Doctor Strange is another one I would love to see instead of yeah, the cause small it, appearance. Yeah, because that, that animated movie was garbage. Like I'm not even gonna lie, like it, it starts off interesting, but the fight sequences are terrible and they animate that really slow. A- like Actually, no, I think you and I watched it back at uh, AIT. Yes, we watched it. You said this movie would be perfect if they could just make them fight better. Yeah, like if they, like if you fast forwarded the fights, they would come out better. It's like they animated it, and then once they inspected the animation for issues, you know, they said, okay, well, we're not going to speed it up. We're just going to keep it in this slow motion inspection. Like, what the, what the fuck? Easy shit in the world. All right. 
All right, now that we pretty much know the final roster of Marvel vs. Capcom 4, the actual final roster, not the DLC roster, even though we know some of that shit already, do you think it's too late for them to fix it? Uh, to fix what they've done character-wise? Do you think it's too late? Why or why not? Uh, Zeno. Too late? I don't think it's ever too late. Sir, you have not played Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Okay, okay, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was later than motherfucker. That shit was later than a goddamn turtle. Hey, that's just like Spider Man 3. We just don't talk about it, all right? <laughs> oh, damn. Fight Club rules. That's how you know you really fucked up. Fact. Okay. So, what do you think they can do to save it? As far as rock, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I can give you a good answer on that. No, that's fine because that's exactly how I describe Capcom's entire business mo- mentality. I don't think anybody understands what the fuck they're doing. I don't think they understand what the fuck they're doing. Like, and then if you actually talk to some of the staff members, like, talk, talk, not, oh, internet, uh, there are screens everywhere, my boss or somebody's boss might be watching. No, if you talk to them, it kind of feels the same way. All right, what, what about you, Hill? Say it again. Do you think that it's too late to redeem the character roster for Marvel vs. Capcom 4? Why or why not? And if you think it's not too late, how do you think they can fix it? Redeem themselves by... At least adding... Decent... DLC people that we just haven't seen before forever. How much you want to bet? The nostalgia characters are just characters who were never put in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but were put in all the 2D games. I shit you not, if I have to pay money for Cammy, I'm going to be pissed for two reasons. One, because I'm going to buy that shit. No, actually three reasons. Two, because I'm going to buy her alternate bullshit outfits. And three, that's not a new fucking character. But yeah, continue. Who the fuck is texting? Uh, to me, another thing that'd be cool, kind of like what they do with um, brain fart. What they did with injustice, add some other, another, like third party outside, like how they added Sub Zero. Oh, you mean into, you want a guest character? Yes. Guest characters are always welcome. I agree with that. What if the guest characters was Cloud Strife and Tifa Lockhart? Dog. I think Tifa would be more of a fit for like and what if it's Advent Children dual wielding cloud? Wait, get one more. Okay, I'm good. What the fuck? Where did all this semen come from? Huh, I have no idea. That could be a whole podcast on itself, but I'd be mad at myself if I did it because then, well, we already know what's going to happen. Nobody shows the fuck up. Anyways, um, mm, well, hashtag you can do it. Okay. Uh, well. 
I, I guess I might as well do it now. Uh, keep in mind, this information was compiled over the course of about three months. And by a complete and total accident. All right. Tetsuya Nomura and the various people on the show. Um, uh, not show, the, the game Kingdom Hearts 3. Were asked, hey, real talk. What that DLC looking like? To which they told them, motherfucker, we ain't thinking about that shit. We ain't even got people working on DLC. We just made it so we could put DLC in potentially later on. So they're actually doing DLC kind of sort of the right way. They're finishing the product first. But really, let's be honest. They're now putting DLC in in the beginning because they don't have the goddamn people to do it. <laughs> they're literally using everyone to do something either on Final Fantasy 15, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, or Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, speed forward to two days ago. Caught up with Tetsuya Nomura again. They asked him, hey, is it possible to start seeing some marvelous things? Not in the Kingdom Hearts franchise, but specifically in Kingdom Hearts 3, if you catch my drift. Yeah, he said no uh, Marvel in Kingdom Hearts 3, I guess you're talking about. Mm, no, that's not what he said specifically. And also, I think you're thinking about the old statement. I said this was two days ago. All right. So he stated, as it stands right now, it's possible. But if it's added in, it wouldn't be something that pertains to the story. So it might be a guest item, a guest character, a guest boss fight, or complete and total random DLC shit like that uh, Final Fantasy World of Final Fantasy. Xenogears Well Tall is a fucking DLC item. Why? I don't know, but it fit. And for some reason, it transforms like a goddamn Saturday morning Japanese robot. Like, the fate isn't inside of the robot. The robot is its own thing. Why is Sora a fucking summon attack in that game? We don't know. He's just guest. He's just a guest appearance. That's what I'm thinking. We we might get. Or um, Marvel inspired costumes for Soro, Donald, Goofy, Riku, and whoever else it is you're gonna be able to play in that game. Oh, I meant to say world. They're they're probably gonna throw some like king random ki uh, kingdom key. Uh, what's this in there? Traverse Town. Something. Well, here's the thing. They don't even know. So, it's not a no, it's not a yes, it's a anything is possible. There's always the Hollow Bastion, too. Yeah, like, you know, we could have some old dude around there who takes out a bunch of Heartless and Sora doesn't know how he do it. Then you get the secret cutscene and turns out, oh, that old dude has claws. Well, he doesn't need my help. I'm just going to leave and do absolutely nothing because there's no reason for me to fuck with him. But everyone knows this fucking Wolverine. I miss Kingdom Hearts. I wouldn't expect anything less than random. Oh, dude. I had a nightmare. Well, I qualified as a nightmare. I had a nightmare that has happened to me four times now, and it's the same fucking nightmare. And it's a very specific nightmare. Uh, I want to say it's triggered by Amy, but that would be very... I, I guess she could take it as offensive, but uh, I don't mean... I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure she had no control over giving me a fucking nightmare, but... Okay, so there's this girl that, well, I think she hates me. It's, it's, it's never really explained. It's, it's Facebook logic, so anybody can just leave or come in your life whenever they feel like. This girl named Amy Haney, really fucking tall, right? Amy loves Kingdom Hearts. She dresses up as Axel a lot. And her Axel, Axel or Lee? Shut the fuck up. And... Her wig game and her wig game is on point, right? Her chakrams, well, they, they're not sharp, but I felt like if she throw them, she could probably kill somebody with them shits. But here's the thing. Uh, I looked at one of the pictures that she had up somewhere or whatever. Right before I went to bed one day, I just got done playing Kingdom Hearts uh, 2. I was I was trying to kill Sifroth if memory serves. 
I succeeded technically in Sephiroth. You don't really kill Sephiroth. But he um, goes to Cloud, then he disappears for some shit. Yeah, same as Fa- the, faster than the speed of light. So. Yeah, which makes no fucking sense if that's yes. Yeah, there's a but it's Kingdom Hearts logic, so I'm used to it by now. So I had this dream where that entire place where he was at, there was a new nobody there. And I was sitting on the couch with Amy, but she had uh, Axel's pyrokinetic abilities, and she's cooking popcorn in her fucking hand through the bag. I was like, how long is it going to be? Shh, shh. And she just starts like, shh, shh. I was like, okay, well, fine, shit. So we're watching on this couch. Like, I don't know if they, the characters are aware that we're there or if they, we're like watching some interdimensional shit. This is, a, you know, it's a fucked up dream, by the way, when you actually remember the whole thing. How rare is it to remember a full dream? Um. So some guy says to uh, Sword, did you bring him? And we, I don't see a sword. I'm like, that's not Sif, bro. And then Amy goes, shh, again. And she's flinging her hands at me and shit. So I cross my hands, and I'm saying, okay, fine, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. And he turns around, you don't see his face, and he starts, cl- and he immediately starts slashing at another guy in a white nobody trench coat. But there's a metal clash sound happening. And he's got really, really long, long uh, arm sleeves, right? So eventually, cuts off a bunch of the fabric, and I see Wolverine claws. And... Then, Sifroth just forms out of a black cloud. And now, Sora transforms into his final form. And it's Sora and this unseeable white nobody and the black nobody fighting together. And, 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 and Sifroth's in there too. But Sifroth is siding with the other guy, who I don't see the face of. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I see... Cloud fucking break a piece of the mountain off, charging at them, doing Omni Slash. The real Omni Slash. Not that bullshit from fucking Smash Brothers. The actual legit Omni Slash, goddammit. And he's got his Ultima Blade in one hand, and he's got his uh, Combiner Blade from the movie. And I'm just like, holy shit. And then Amy pops me in the back of the fucking neck. And, and then she starts handing me popcorn right as I get pissed. And I'm sitting there and he says, I see. You've returned. And I'm just sitting there like, that voice sounds familiar. Well, better late than never. And then right as they say that, like, they fuck with Sora and do some shit to him, knock him unconscious. So then it's just uh, Cloud, the white, the white nobody, the black nobody, Sephiroth. So they both take off their mask and the black nobody was fucking Sabretooth and the white nobody was Wolverine. And then I woke up screaming. And I remember also that dream happened the same day I found out that Disney owns Marvel now or the publishing rights to Marvel now. So I don't know if Amy triggered it or that whole acquisition triggered it, but I've had this dream Three or four fucking times. And I actually remember the full thing. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself. It sounds like a good dream. But I wake up fucking scared and shaking. And in a cold sweat. Also I really. 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 Don't want Wolverine to interact with Sora. And if he does. I want it to go one way. Don't ask me anything about my life Sora. Everything is fucked up. It's really messed up. You're never going to make me smile or laugh. Anytime you try to do, I'm just going to look at you like, I wish I could kill you. But you're too goddamn Japanese. Like, that's how I figure a a Wolverine and Sora relationship would go. Yeah, I I know that that was completely out of left field, but hey, look. I had to put those images in somebody else's head besides mine. What do you think, Kale? Does that sound like a good dream or a bad dream to you? 
Sounds like an amazing dream to me personally. What about you, Zeno? I like it. Fuck as long as Sephiroth. <laughs> Bitches. You don't want to waking up like a bitch, so. Okay, you know what? It was bound to happen. <laughs> Congratulations. That was your first touche heel. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? <laughs> that was like literally the first time he ever touched me. I commend you on that. Telford will be proud. And it's recorded, too. And then he will immediately shit talk you the minute I tell him that you're trying to touche. Anyways. All right. So uh, any other Marvel news or things y'all want to talk about or bring up before we close this bitch out? Not, not really at the moment. Oh, I had a question. Oh, what's so up? Isn't, isn't Jessica Jones and Luke Cage basically Superman who can't fly? <laughs> no, no. Uh, Jessica Jones is basically Batman if he didn't want to. It, Batman if he didn't want to be if he didn't want to dress up and had superpowers. That's what Jessica Jones is. She's an alcoholic. Super, super detective. Now, Power Man is just, he's a science experiment going wrong. That's it. But, I do have some closing statement. Uh, Hey, Defenders is coming out in like 10 days or less. Real talk. And then 30 days after that, guess what? Marvel vs. Capcom 4, which will, as par usual, be a very divisive game. And I don't know how to feel about it personally. But at the same time, if I don't get my money's worth, worst case scenario, I have the $200 edition with the statues. I'm selling them bitches piecemeal so I can get my money back. But at the same time, I'm, I'm probably going to keep the shit. But I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. This is, the weir this is a weird era of video gaming. Let me just say that. You, you used to know... If you got a good game or a bad game when you played the game. Now we're in an age where you can somewhat know or sometimes know if you have a good game or a bad game. Before you get it in your system. And then guess what? No refunds. What a world, what a world. Alright, this has been another exciting episode of It's Marvel Talk Motherfucker. I've um, been your friendly neighborhood host, Zach Pearson, and I will see you guys when I see y'all.